Welcome back to the Brothers Gwyn. Today we're really excited to be holding our first author interview on the channel with Mr. Adrian Selby. Thank you so much straight away just for agreeing to this interview. We're really looking forward to talking about your works, your writing process and more. Yeah, cool. this has come from The Broken Binding, which is a, a great indie bookstore and they are sponsoring us and, uh, and working with us doing these nice interviews. So I'm sure we can bring lots of different uh, interviews to everyone on the channel very soon. But Adrian, thank you for coming on here and, and nattering away with us <laughs> in the evening. Yeah, real pleasure. <laughs> so firstly, big question. Yeah, no pressure. Are you ready? Elves or dwarves? Cool. Elves or dwarves? Oh God, you start with a really tough one. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, I, I can I, I can say both. You know what? I've got to go. Oh yes. Mm, dwarves just. Yeah. Just, what, what's your what's, rationale? It's <laughs> a so rationale. I I uh, I don't know. Just salt of the earth i think the elves carry a little too much of that airy fairy baggage don't they you know <laughs> I, I, I do love elves elves are, elves, are, elves are great to look at you know they're super cool you know we obviously love legolas you know, running yeah. across the snow and stuff but um there's something hearty about the dwarf I, maybe mm. it's the welsh maybe it's the uh you know the whole yeah, mining so thing yeah you know, got, that's got to be in there in the in the blood somewhere so yeah dwar <laughs> dwarfs i think yeah yeah, no, good choice. The elves can be a bit flashy, can't they, sometimes? You know, yeah, like yeah. Sliding down the stairs on, yeah. a, on a shield. Yeah. 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 Or Gimli's yeah. drowning, bless him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can't beat him. Yeah, never so touch a Welshman. It would be great if um, you can say a few sentences about yourself, just talk about what works have you written, and just a, a quick summary before we get into more specific questions, if that's all right. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, so I'm... Uh, fantasy author. Uh, I have got three books out. First was 2016. Uh, the debut was Snakewood. And then the second 2018. Oh, there it is. Beautiful. <laughs> and the second, I, I should have had had mine ready. Shouldn't I? <laughs> yeah, we're prepared. Uh, yeah. <laughs> was, uh, was, was The Winter Road, 2018. Oh, <laughs> and then uh, the third one, well, what was the third one? I'm sure you have it there somewhere. The third <laughs> one was Brother Red, which was out in January. And there you go. Good to see the Broken Bindings. Yeah, yeah, I love yes. this buying copy. The Broken Bunny kindly sent us one each, which was yeah. awesome. As we yeah, said earlier, everyone right. watching, you can find Adrian's books on The Broken Binding. The link's in the description below. And the covers are so nice that you just have to have the set, don't you? Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah they're, 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 um, they're different artists, but I think they suit each of the books um you know I've, I've been asked a couple of times you know would you have liked to have all the same artists so you, you've got very similar covers and all that but yeah. but um dave palumbo is the cover artist of snakewood and i think he's gone on to do some wonderful stuff for um i think it's the folio edition i think the folio edition of robin hobbs farcia trilogy which they just really, they put wow. into folio so 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 that that was lovely to see dave's work there and think oh he's done my cover you know the cover of my <laughs> yeah, debut yeah. Um, and then obviously I've got James Jones has done the other two covers, you know, and it's, yeah, it's outstanding stuff, you know. It's, oh, they're beautiful. That, they're so distinctive, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, they, 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 yeah, they're super cool. I mean, that, that's a big shout out to Lauren Panapinto, the, um, you know, the creative director who's in charge of all that, you know, and, and that side of it is... Is I, th I think one of the trickier things because again one of the things you get asked uh, you know as, a, as an author and a new author is whatever is um, so you know what input did you have on the cover did you choose you know no I have no input on the cover <laughs> none whatsoever they sort yeah. of say well you know do you, we we think this this or this um, and so with the winter road I think I got given four images okay and I I had a favourite and um, then I put them out to my teammates. And saying right, I've, I've been asked to pick. What do you all think? You know, because they're they're all obviously quite excited yeah, about getting yeah. published and stuff. Um, and we all picked, or most of us picked, the one I liked, and the one we all least liked at the time was the one they went with. Oh, <laughs> so, really? so they said. So, so they said. So they said. Thanks for the feedback, Adrian. That's great. <laughs> um, we're going with this one. It's just like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, <laughs> but 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 what I didn't realise. Um, was all the other stuff that they've got to consider. So, of course, I was just looking at the images thinking, oh, yeah, that's a really standard image. They said, right, what we've got to do is we've got to put your name really big and we've got to put the name of the title really big and we've got to put a byline in. Yeah. And so the actual working space you've got is only this much and it has to sit roughly here. Mm. And then when you look at the images again, you're like, ah, so it's actually perfect. Yeah. And, yeah. and, so, and so then later you get sent the 
the mock-up with all the the titles and the lettering and and, and all that stuff and it's just like oh my god that's awesome yeah because because you just you you just don't know you know what, how, what they have to think about and do and and structure the image to to work within just a little bit of the page you know so yeah yeah so we are very yeah and then it's and obviously it's grown on me since you know so yeah yeah, yeah it must be quite nerve-wracking waiting for that cover art to come in when you're not really quite sure what direction yeah. <clears throat> when when you realize it's it's got very little to do with you yeah. and and at the uh, and at the same time it's your work you know mm. um you know because so so, so a, a fact hat a little factoid i remember i got the snakewood cover i'm looking over there because my snake woods are over there on my yeah, insole cool. copies so so the guy in the front um, you see um, his hands cl uh, clasped there. Yeah. Um, the the one thing, if you were super geeky, or at least I think I might be the only person in the world that noticed, <laughs> yeah. is is if that's meant to be one of the characters, um, he ha he or she hasn't paid the color because the hands are flashy colored. Ah. Oh. And and so I said I said to my editor Jenny, I said, it's it's beautiful because I love the strong blood red. It's yeah. just it's mm. really. Um, almost abstract expressionist yeah. cover, you know, which, which is fantastic work. I said, but but the character clearly hasn't paid the color. And Jenny wrote back and said, Adrian, if anyone notices, <laughs> I'll buy you a very large whiskey. <laughs> have and you so far, I have not, <laughs> I have not received the whiskey because she was she was bang on, you know. And, yeah. and and obviously, what I've come to learn since is is how um, you know how much of the decisions that are made regarding the book are, are very much about its appearance its its mm. punchiness on the shelf you know from yeah. a distance and stuff like that and you realize there's all these other things to come into play so then when i then saw it in situ for the first time and i cried when i first saw it um you know in a bookshop and as you walk up to it you 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 see the reality of their thinking because yeah. it's like book cover book cover 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 bright red you know got a yeah. big white figure in the middle and you're like yeah it stands up to mile you know yeah yeah and it's, and and so, it's suit, suiting the book as well i mean there's so many different yeah. things to, to juggle with on on a cover but i think yeah. you know it, it captures it really well and like you said it's so bold it's hard yeah. not to notice isn't it yeah. and uh yeah, yeah. great yeah. name as well snakewood that is the only yes. one that william and i haven't actually read yet i've read the winter road and, yeah. uh, and will's I've read, read brother, brother red, red. So that'll be the next pro one. Oh, yeah. Probably not a bad thing because is it is it will I uh, when I watched one of your videos said, said uh, was it was your initiation into Grimdark? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I assume it wasn't Ed because you write for Grimdark magazine, but yeah, yeah, yeah. but <laughs> so so you probably started at the right one because Snakewood um, is considered a much trickier read structurally because yeah. it's it's a found footage approach, so it's telling the story of these um, twenty. Um, once upon a time legendary mercenaries this mercenary crew called Kalen's 20 and when it starts the the two main characters of Kalen's 20 uh, find out that they're all being killed off one by one but this is like 15 20 years on yeah sure um but but it's all told as interviews or letters or diary entries and that kind of thing and it's all been put together by a scholar so it's so it's people i I think people struggle because for the first hundred pages it's going back and forward in time and it's got yeah. loads of different narrators because they're all saying yeah. their bit yeah yeah to, to 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 bring you into the who these people were mm. and you know and why it's all going wrong and, and all the rest of it so um yeah so so i think possibly going in the way that you you guys have um you got used to the magic system and the world building and the style yeah. of writing and so hopefully you'll get into yeah, snakewood yeah, and be like yeah 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 you know yeah, well, the water's warm. Concept, the idea of having all those pieces, all the different narrators, and just kind of filling in, and I love that idea. I, 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 I'm sure that we're going to love it. Oh, absolutely. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully, yeah. I mean, yeah. so that that's made that's made a question spring to mind. So, talking of grimdark, uh, what do you think of the term grimdark? I did. I found out about the term grimdark when um, it, my publisher said this is grimdark i think you know was, that's how we're gonna I said, what's that then <laughs> no idea you know um because i was <laughs> because yeah i just be, yeah i i i hadn't you know i i don't read a lot of fantasy generally it, it's yeah. only because uh an amount of time yeah there's loads and loads of interesting books across all genres both non-fiction fiction, fiction. Mm -hmm. yeah. so fantasy is just a percentage of that rather than something I'd go after, you know, I just yeah, go yeah. after books uh, that, are, that are cool. Um, and some are fantasy and, and many aren't. Um, 
so I, I wasn't really up on the, the genre's progression. So if you like, once I got the book deal and all that, I thought, right, I need to kind of find out who's, who's big, you know, mm. at the moment, you know, and I, I had, I, I had read George Martin stuff, you know, Game of Thrones stuff before it um, uh, got on the TV and all that, but I hadn't, I hadn't heard of Joe Abercrombie, you know, and yeah. Mark Lawrence and stuff like that. So yeah. I'd read, I, you know, I'd read their work. And then so, oh, right, okay, yeah, I can see yeah. why pe people put me here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but 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 at the same time, I was a little bit surprised that, um, you know, that term, I think the surprise was why am I grimdark was because I thought, well, I'm just writing a story that's set in hard times because the yeah. pseudo-medieval or Roman age or whatever, the, you know, that kind of time frame, it, you know, lives are just brutally hard, you know, yeah. so... Mm -hmm. So, so how is it any more than, you know, what you see in horrible histories or whatever else, you know, yeah, it's, it's, cool. it's just, it's just, it's just hard, hard lives. Lots of people die for no good reason. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's a power, constant power struggle, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then, so you write what you think is a, appropriate, I suppose, for the setting. Sure. And then it's like, oh, and that's grimdark. Oh, right. I just, I just thought people lived really hard. I thought, I thought life was grimdark, <laughs> you know, and so I was just <laughs> yeah. trying, to, I was just trying to be, realistic to, to yeah, the extent yeah, that you can yeah. in, a, in a fantasy world and it is low fantasy so um yeah there's not a lot of you know they, well there's no spell casting and lightning spells and yeah. fireballs and all that kind of stuff so um you know for me it was it needed to be very grounded um yeah. and then obviously i got all the whole drug element and everything in there as well which which kind of adds to that um so so yeah so i, I get that it's a category and i get that i i'm in there be, because the story seemed to be you know, really depressing or, or in, say in the case of Snakewood, they're about, you know, two utter pigs or horrible, horrible <laughs> people. Um, yeah. And then, uh, and then I guess with the winter road and everything, it, you know, there, some stuff happens in there, which is just, you know, just really horrible. Yeah. Mm. You know, um, that the, the one key, <laughs> key thing, you know, the key event, if you like, in Taylor Amundsen's life. Um, you know, it, it, you know, it's just horrible. It's just, yeah. you know, I, I, writing it was, was really, really hard. Mm. Um, but, the, but then, you know, having done the research as you know i'm sure all your other guests going forward you know they will have done all the historical research as well and you you guys obviously you know you know your stuff um it, it's just you know everything from like a single sword wound you know sepsis and whatever else and then you just drop yeah. dead you know and it, it's yeah. it's it's just it seems almost um mundane in the most tragic and desperately awful way um, life <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. so so what why isn't every fantasy grimdark in that respect you know and i, I know I, yeah, I know they aren't but but that's a kind, a kind of where i came at the term thinking all i was doing was just doing something that was faithful if you like yeah, in, in, in in those respects uh and then and then realizing it was actually at the really dark gritty end of, of the spectrum of oh, okay yeah, it's funny. It's funny because because grimdark is such a contested term nowadays. Um, yeah. You know, it's obviously some authors don't like being labelled, you know, yeah. as, as a word because they're just yeah. like you say, you know, writing something that to you feels feels yeah. real. If you look at history, yeah. history is as yeah. grimdark as it gets. Yeah, you can't really think of anything yeah, yeah. worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, um, a history. Yeah, as, as I, and I think I was on a panel, um, you know, with uh, Matt and Broken Bindings and stuff. Yeah. And they did the TBR con, and that's what all the other. Um, you know, Peter McLean and that, all of them said, you know, was was history's worse than anything we could draw yeah, up. You yeah. know. But I, I think if there's one thing maybe you, you can be concerned about with the term green dark or, or it being a label is if that label is something that someone looks at and goes, oh, right, you're grim dark, you know, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and, and, and so they haven't, you know, they have, it's all, it can become a hurdle maybe to, to a mm. potential reader who might find your stuff cool, you yeah. know, and, and, you know, insofar as, I've had some I've had some lovely feedback which was really heartening around you know how the you know Taylor Amundsen or or Druna in in Brother Red um you know how how they stick to their guns and they're courageous and they've got a lot of spirit yeah, yeah. and they, they they keep the true moral course you you sort of think well that that there's a kind of a hope there in those grim circumstances that I think would would have a broad appeal but if the label becomes a barrier if someone doesn't look over the barrier to see oh actually i might enjoy that because yeah. it's a middle-aged female protagonist who's actually a pretty good person in trying times you know it's it, it's there's probably elements to it that you don't get that chance if you've got the label ahead of you yeah. to say oh no 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 look, look just look past the label it's okay you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah so um it, so, so maybe that's that that could be a thing um i'd hope not but yeah you don't know 
Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say, that whilst your works have been labelled as grim dark, I really enjoyed that theme and the prevalence of hope. And I was I, I was thinking while I was reading this, it is like real life, there's obviously terrible times, but there's always a light and some goodness. And the virtues that you put in your characters, was that something that, again, you were just trying to depict something real? Was that just kind of something that you did subconsciously or did you mean to inject that hope into the dark? Plot. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 it sort of comes naturally. So, so the thing with me is, I, I, and as in what I believe is important, which is why I tried to, to write them, is, is characters that you, you really care about, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and so, in thinking about, well, what do I have to do as a writer to make a reader really fear for this character, really love this character, really want this character to, to do well, and. And when you begin thinking about that sans the plot, you you sort of think, well, there's someone who people um, like to be with. You know, um, you can obviously yeah. write about complete, completely awful people. Um, is it, is it uh, what's, the, what's the main character in, um, is it Prince of Fools or whatever, the Mark Lawrence? Oh, Yorg. Uh, Yorg, isn't yeah. it? Yorg, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you can, you can write that obviously, and, and that's a great challenge and, and certainly, um, you know, one of the most inspiring books for me um, for Snakewood was um, True History of the Kelly Gang by Peter yeah. Carey, um, you know, which is about Ned Kelly, who's is obviously not, not, a, not a pleasant chap. <laughs> but but, but, but what, was, what was super inspiring about that was how he got me to care about Ned Kelly sure. as a person, you know, and, and, and how Ned Kelly went down the wrong path, but nevertheless, he had qualities. He was a three-dimensional character. Yeah. And so, and, and so I... When I thought up sort of Taya Amundsen, um, yeah, yeah. So there's this whole story there about like, so Snakewood was a thing, and then Orbit came back and said, um, "We we would like two more novels from you, Adrian. Um, can they be standalones in the same world?" Yeah. Um, have you got any ideas about the direction you want me to take it? And they said, "Oh no, it's up to you. Just, you know, just, just, just write something." And and I, <laughs> I, I did. I, I was like, "Okay, I have no ideas. <laughs> I, 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 I have." I've had three ideas in my life, four actually. <laughs> I'm, I'm starting the fourth. The other three are published. Like I, I'm, some authors are, have, have whole shelves full of ideas. I, I, ha yeah. I have nothing. So, so in Snakewood, there's um, this moment where um, a character has to swear fealty to the post. Um, I'll get to the answer in a minute. I'm just taking you there on this on the circle. <laughs> yeah, you get it. Um, and uh, and so the post being basically like a Dutch East India Company or British East India Company, you know, a mm. kingdom without borders. It's a secular organisation. So yeah. so I thought, well, what what would be the equivalent of their holy relic, you know? And so I it just popped into my head a child's bloody shirt, you know, a shirt a child's shirt yeah. covered in blood. Okay. I thought, okay, I'll go with that. I <laughs> I didn't question it. I just kind of went for it. And so when then it was like, what else will you write about? I thought, well. If it's in the same world, what where did that bloody shirt come from? Why is a child's shirt a sacred relic of the post? And I hadn't figured it out at that point. I had yeah, no idea. Right. I'd not I'd not met Taylor Amundsen, you know. And so then you you almost work backwards, you sort of thinking, well, who who then is Taylor Amundsen? Taylor Amundsen's gonna be that child's mother. Um, but she was a mercenary soldier, and I've already determined in that world that one one of the things that taking fight brews does to women in particular is, is is it makes them infertile because it's mm -hmm. just so messes with your insides and everything yeah. and, and i and i thought you know that that's yeah that speaks to the additional hardships you know um you know a woman's got to cover anyway apart from all the other um stuff in a in a patriarchy so i thought that that's that can be something which you can lean into that particular cruelty so, so i thought well so if she's yeah. if she's got a son then it'll be a stepson and so that means there'll be a father so so before any of the plot i'm thinking about the relationships sure. and yeah, so she, she couldn't have her own kids she's a good she's a pretty good person she's a mercenary but she you know she found her way through and now she's retired and she wants to do something useful with all her money um so she she would have the stepchild after so it's, so it's almost sorting itself out you know she has the yeah. stepchild after the career obviously now she's a merchant sitting back she dotes on the kid she, she dotes on that she's found love at last in her you know in her 40s um and so these things are precious to her and 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 i thought right they're in love but so the so, but the moment then that you have that um you 
you care for her and you fear for the, you, you know, she's going to go through some tough stuff because you read her on the back of the book in the shop, <laughs> but, <clears throat> but, but you, you therefore start to think, all right, I, I'm a bit worried here because yeah, she's got a lot to lose, you know, and, and then the challenge is how do I, what things do I say? Where do I put the camera, if you like? Yeah. And, and what do I do with the dialogue and the conversations that they have to, to demonstrate that, that love and the fears that they have as a couple about who are wanting to push this road across the wilderness, um, especially when they find out that there's actually a bandit warlord there, which is obviously the main plot of um, yeah. Winter Road, that's determined to stop any of that nonsense and take over that area himself, you know, and take over her own family's tribe. So, so they're aware of, she's aware of the peril, they're aware of the peril. Um, and obviously then you, you meet some crewmates and stuff. And so I love the idea of a gang, you know, going somewhere and doing some stuff, you know, yeah. fellowship of the ring living, casting <laughs> yeah. its long shadow from my sort of 12 year old self all the way through. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I, I, it, it's all about relationships. And I think if you can show that character's relationships um, and how they demonstrate who they are, what they believe, what they say, through through those relationships, those interactions, the loyalty that they inspire, and this, that, and the other, um, that that brings the hope in. The hope then comes because you know you also decide for plot reasons that this character is not going to bend or break. You know this character is actually going to be pretty straight. Um, you know, and I've done Snakewood where. Uh, you know, which I think got, got the grim dark thing because they're two mercenaries who simply don't care who they kill, um, as you'll find out. Um, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and at the start of the book, one of them basically takes a mortal wound and the story is really him trying to get home to his tribe to be buried in his, his homeland. Sure. And, and nothing will stop these two. Yeah. But at the same time, the challenge for me there was, how can I create these couple of really awful people but their relationship is one of love and loyalty and and years together. They're almost like an old couple. And so it, so even there, I was that was more of the Mark Lawrence challenge, I guess, is you've got a characters that are capable of very morally grey actions and, and yeah, a history yeah. of of dreadful slaughter as mercenaries. But you could sympathize with. Yeah. yeah. With Taya, I almost wanted something different. I wanted her to be like a really good person. Because in a way, then you when you put them through the mill. When you when you when you try to break them as characters, it it hopefully that's it's a terrible thing to say. Hopefully, <laughs> it, 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 it 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 hurts all the more when they get broken. Yeah. And so yeah. that the read the reader is all the more engaged and hurt by mm -hmm. it. And so the reader's emotional engagement is stronger. And hopefully then therefore that makes the book more compelling. You know, um, ditto, you know, brother red. Um, so that yeah, there's a similar kind of thing there with with Druna. She. she so Druna came about, and again, so you go back to Snakewood, so I had, these, I had to have two more ideas. I had no ideas, <laughs> I had to have two more ideas. So I had the the, the, the child shirt. And then <clears throat> I'd, I'd come across this concept of, the, of um, so there's a point in Snakewood where um, a, a young uh, exiled princess, Galathia, um, it sort of rocks up at this place, having been kind of orphaned and cast into the wild or whatever. And, um, uh, a character that saved her life died in the process okay. and uh and he's he's in the he he was of the post and so uh there's this moment it's, it's not a plot spoiler particularly there's this moment where the character's wife is a minor cat he's only in there very briefly the minor character's wife kind of comes up um and it's actually one of my favorite bits of the whole book um and all the the post line up and they've got his red cloak folded like they do with the flags you know the american soldiers you see them fold the flag up and stuff and they gave it to her to give to the to, to the um the character's wife and then they all start singing this hymn called brother red yeah oh, what, what was the hymn what was the hymn no idea <laughs> you know it, it's this really powerful moving hymn thinking of like the welsh you know male yeah, voice well, choirs yeah. and stuff like that you know really powerful moving hymn um but I'm not creative or brilliant enough to figure out what that is. So I'm just going to say it's a really powerful moving hymn and there's tears everywhere and, and we'll move on. <laughs> and so I so saw, of course, I've got no ideas. I'm sort of thinking, oh, you know what? What is Brother Red? I mean, it's it's actually something that all the posts sing. The post had become increasingly important as I was writing these books. I realized yeah. the post was really this very fascinating organization, like the, like the British East India Company, which I did some research on, you know, kind of crazy thing. Um, 
And so I thought, oh, if I if I figure out who Brother Red was, um, and and so who inspired the poem or, or the song, I'm gonna have to figure out the poem, man. I am actually gonna have to write to him, <laughs> Brother Red, and and it was meant to be too awesome for me to write, you know. So so I gave him a crack, which is it's obviously the start of the novel. I did I did yeah. my best, um, but but that's then is working out, sort of going backwards. Well, who inspired Brother Red? And I thought, well, there was a there was a point where I just thought, well, it'd be cool if Brother Red was a woman, and that may because if you like, I liked the idea that they're all brothers to each other, mm. but brothers in that sense of comrades or you know, yeah, yeah. Sure. I just like the in the same way. It's, I know it sounds slightly odd because obviously brother is a is a male thing, but but yeah. uh, in the in the wire, I loved how they. Um, I think was it, was it and I'm rubbish with grammar. They said she's good police. They're not not a good policeman or police yeah. woman or whatever, but she's good police. Yeah. And it, it's a similar kind of thing where they yeah. just all call each other brothers, but it's, it's not meant to indicate. Yeah. And I thought, well, how do I, how do I make that a thing? And then so, uh, and you know, you, and you've read it, I know. So, so that there's a, there's a bit where I think this, this tribal chief um, says, says brothers, not really thinking about the fact that it's, it's a woman. And she makes a joke out of it. You know, she says, you know, well, you know, I, Last time I looked, I was not particularly a brother, but you know, but but hey, you know, <laughs> yeah, she, yeah. She, she she kind of understood how he meant it, which was the way that all her, you know, and yeah. so I I took that. That just seemed to work for me. I just liked the idea that there was this sort of slight dissonance in terms of the the nickname and the you know the person, um, you know, in terms of brother and a woman, and then from there it was like, why did she become a um, you know, join the post, you know, and and because I think in Snakewood. Uh, in particular, there's there's a sense that the post were once a very cool thing and a very noble thing. And I saw in the Winter Road, you know, having written the Winter Road, I saw that Taylor Amundsen had set the win had set the post up to try to be a something which could really change the world for good. Yeah. Of course, I I also knew that by Snakewood, it was a it was an absolute sort of, you know, like the. Catholic Church, you know, medieval Catholic Church got all wrong, like a mafia. It was, yeah. British, or, or the British East India Company, to be more pertinent, because they, yeah. they were, they were doing all kinds of dreadful things in the name yeah. of the British Empire, and and so, so so they were so that was interesting because I thought, well, this one slots nicely in the middle then, because maybe this is the point at which the post starts to go. Mm. Why does the post start to go? And you think, ah, maybe it's because you know, uh, so the character, the bad guy you're introduced to or the bad being you're introduced to should i say at the uh, opening of brother red yeah is the engine for for that pivot um sure. at least initially he it, like uh, he they instigate the the kind of the first really seriously bad act that the post does that the druna finds herself up against so for me i put it if you like at the at the the pivot point in the post history yeah. um and then also the stuff about the first fieldsman and all that you know we're being a fieldsman um again was it was a little bit of me going back and realizing oh damn i'd written myself into various corners in snakewood <laughs> you know fieldsman 77 73 and all that and i thought oh you know how do i how do i work this out in terms of the timeline i'd built yeah. so they're, they're great creative constraints that you work around yeah um and and then it all gets explained in the uh, later on in brother in the book mm. um you know how how that can be a thing given what happens in snakewood so so that actually then all tied up beautifully and i was very impressed because it made it look like i knew what i was doing all along <laughs> i really love how you started you start with something quite intimate intimate and quite small and then grow out organically from there because a lot of authors they start with the wide concept and then go into the characters but you can really see that the characters are at the heart of your story um, and, yeah, it. Yeah, I find it just really interesting how you start and just grow and you look at those relationships and then you look at the plot and how that builds around them. Yeah, de definitely. I, and I think, you know, I, I I don't know the extent to which it's obviously an influence. I don't know the extent to which, you know, Game of Thrones is an influence, but but it was it was fascinating for me to, to have read the books and for, you know, Tyrion, Cersei and Jon Snow and all them to, to just pop out like it like like it had been so long since i've read such strong characters you know yeah. um and, and and memorable characters you know when you're bombing through the books and i'll confess and george will never see this i'll confess that you know as the books were going on 
they were really the only, the only five or six characters, you know, that the ones mainly in the TV show. It was like, can I just get to the next bit with, yeah, sure. you yeah. know, um, Cersei or, or, or those or those characters, or Tywin or whoever it was, you know, the, 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 the kind of main ones. So when the TV show came along, it's it was no surprise at all to me that those characters popped on screen. You know, yeah. they 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 were just so um, just so kind of easy to get your head around and so easy to to follow and and love and all that, which I think is the great triumph of, of his work. And then you look at the scale of the Game of Thrones, you know, and all these, these dragons in this world, in that that region, this region, that region, you know, there's armies and everything. And yet, really, when it's like, oh, what you love about Game of Thrones, everyone talks about oh yeah Tyrion's my favorite or Jon Snow is yeah. cool you know my, my, my wife Jon Snow you know that's it you know she's she into pieces <laughs> so you know she, I think she, she said at one point she's when she realized that characters would get killed off that you weren't <laughs> expecting you know after after the whole kind of first episode of season or whatever yeah. she said if they kill Jon Snow I'm done I'm, <laughs> I'm out of here you know and because yeah. I'm watching I because I'm looking at this she doesn't read fantasy. She reads my books, you know, with a gritted through gritted teeth. She, <laughs> she she doesn't read fantasy at all, and she's engrossed, and she yeah. loves Jon Snow, and she and she loves all that, and she, and she is not a, she's not in our bubble, if that makes sense, you know. Yeah. And that to me is is the is the thing that makes me feel like you know that that or why I why I pursue this approach, and that yeah. is because I I sense that. What people are after are great, great characters, people they can really love. You know, I, I had one uh, person who I know from the Super Relaxed Fantasy Club, which which uh, was was in London before COVID, once a month. Um, and she said, "I'm coming up to the last fifteen percent of Brother Red, and I just don't want to go on because I <laughs> just don't want anything bad to happen." <laughs> and to me, that that's that's mission accomplished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've done a great job there. To that, that's, that you know, yes, yeah, ex ex yeah, ex exactly. You know, so so I I look for that, and I think that's why maybe I don't focus on a, a genre when I read. Yeah. I'm just looking for recommendations where someone said I fell in love with this character, or sure. or I couldn't, you know, I I was in tears at the end or something because I it makes me think right, th what will drive you to tears isn't the world building as wonderful yeah. and as enhancing as it can be. Yeah, it's 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 because you fell in love with one of those people in the book, you know, and and so I now I'm drawn to it, you know. Hmm. Oh, that's that's really interesting. Like, um, something that I've definitely not. Uh, I think characters do act as a heart, and definitely with most of what I read, I love to just be attached to them, see their virtues and vices. Um, I think the shift in probably the past few decades is seeing people who are more real and authentic. Um, yeah, and yeah. Brother Red really does that. Uh, so obviously, when you're planning your books, you have this organic kind of growth to it. When do you really start writing? I think George R. R. Martin says there's two types of writers, the architects and the gardeners. And it seems you're a bit of an architect at the beginning, but then do you just set to writing and just let it grow? Or do you have a set plan? I, I have a plan that, that I then wander from, but, <laughs> but, but the plan is hugely detailed. So I... I Maybe it's because I'm a novice. I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I I have to know where I'm going. I I, I need the guide rails of of a of a, of a good solid plan. Um, part yeah. of it is the fear of the saggy middle. You know, and and because because with all three books, I knew what the end scene would be at the start. Okay. I knew I knew what the yeah. final moment would be. So I know it's there, and yeah. I know I roughly I'm going to start here. And then the great fear is that everything in between is a load of rubbish, <laughs> or, or or it or it's contrived or or yeah. whatever you know. So so I feel like I need to, excuse me, just sipping water here. I, I feel like I need <laughs> to um, really draw that path out to make sure that the you know the beats are there, that yeah. that it's it's not it doesn't feel like it's just getting a bit slow or whatever. And but when you then start writing it. You then get a true feel for whether it's actually going too fast, too slow, and, and stuff like that. You know, and certainly when it came to submissions to, you know, Jenny, my editor. Yeah. You know, there there were bits in in Snakewood, which which is just like, yeah, I'm I I just this it's just talky 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 talky. Stop. You know, yeah. you know, get Gant back in for some. You know, start kicking some ass. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and 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 I'm the code. You know what she's meaning there is. You know it. And I think there was also a bit in um in brother in. Yeah, in Brother Red, which which was the same. There, there was a little too much kind of just wandering around with a bit of exposition. So so she's just picking up on the pacing there, you know. Yeah. And, and that's something which I when you do your plan, you think, um, 
yeah, that feels about right. That feels about right. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, they're going to go there. Then there's going to be a bit of action. So it's not going yeah. to be just talking and walking. Um, but but you can misjudge it when it comes to the execution because you don't you didn't realize that the talking and walking bit actually took 15, 20, 30 more pages than yeah. than you, yeah. you, you thought. And, and so as you're reading it, you know, you kind of think, eh, okay, you know, I, and of course then that's, that's, it's great feedback because you sort of think, well, I need to get all that out because I didn't put all that in for nothing. You know, I wasn't trying yeah. to fill the pages because no one's, <laughs> the word count was, was a very kind of broad 120 to 170, you know, so you're not, you're not fighting to get the words. You're, you're just yeah. thinking, well, I, is there a more efficient way to say those things, you know, to get that stuff across? So it's, it puts you back to, to thinking more closely about it. Sure. Um, and then, and then weird stuff happens, you know, so, so in Brother Red, um, the bit where Druna meets Ufra. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the first time when Ufra gets off her horse when when she's gone out into the wilderness. Yeah. Um, as I was typing that sentence, I realised they were going to fall in love. Oh, really? Okay. So, so, so the whole plot was there, and and then I thought, oh, actually, no, they're going to fall in love. <laughs> it's like a lie. And, and I thought, yeah, and then I thought, oh, that changes oh, that changes everything. <laughs> You know, so but 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 at the same time it, it just it was something about the being in the moment and yeah. seeing Ufra get off her horse and just stand and I was looking from Druna's eyes almost and I just saw Druna's just gonna go ah oh, <laughs> like just not only the, the strangeness but but just this unreal ethereal crazy different beauty that, yeah. that Ufra had uh, which I don't think I executed particularly well, but the because I know, I know someone called it out uh, on a comment, you know, this the love at first sight trope or whatever. <laughs> uh, it's happened. It's happened to me. I, you know, I, I'll, I'll say that it, 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 it might be a trope, but it's, it, it, it can be a real thing. Yeah, I, don't um, mean, I thought you did it really well, that shift in tone. I thought, I think quite a lot of romance in books can seem quite jarring. Yeah, um, and, and it was the first time I'd ever done any romance or love, you know. So, so, so the scene just after the battle was kind of like I'd finished writing that scene, and I went into to my wife Rhea, and I just said, "I think I've just written a bit of a naughty scene, <laughs> you know, with 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 you know one half human and you know, and she's just like, <laughs> all right, you know, do, do you need to sit down? Do you need to, <laughs> do, do, you need, do you need a glass of water? Do you, need to sit down? <laughs> think, you know." But, and, and that's, that was just that was just kind of nerves and inexperience, you know, because yeah. I think obviously there's nothing worse than you know, a bad sex scene, right? So, um, <laughs> so, so when they fell in love, that was one of the fears as well. Is well, how do you how do you write about characters in love? I mean, yeah, give give <laughs> give, give give two rugged blokes who are mates swords and send them steaming <laughs> in and sort some stuff out, no problem at all. But you know, um, you know, a woman falling in love with uh, kind of a plant being, yeah, it's like okay, I, oh, you know, like a, like. A, <laughs> You know, you've been in love. You know what love feels like, but but you know, it's just like yeah. But I'm, I can't. Oh, you know, I'm my thumbs now. Yeah, trying to execute yeah. it. Well execute is, it is yeah. must yeah. be. Yeah, it must be terrifying. It it it. I've I've had that with all all the books. You know, I'm one of the great yeah. pleasures of of reading brilliant writers. You know, um, of which there are millions behind me. Um, you know, especially writers like Hilary Mantle. You know, and the Wolf Hall and stuff uh, in particular, you know, stands out where, where, uh, and Sophia Samata, um, Stranger in a Laundry, and I've banged on about yeah. that in, in, in previous um, interviews and, and questions I've been asked, where the, where the writing is, is so outstandingly good, or, the, or they nail the, the emotion of a scene. There's a scene yeah. in, in Wolf Hall, I think, he, he, uh, Thomas Cromwell's lost his daughters to the pox or, or yeah. whatever, it's pneumonia or something, and he's in a cupboard and he, uh, he finds some old uh, angel wings that they would have worn for Christmas, you know. And it's there's just it's something she says about the, the glitter on the wings coming off on his fingers as though it's not real or it's not magical anymore. It's just dirt, you know. And and, it, and that whole mortality debt, you know. And she he picks a she sorry she picks a, a metaphor there or a moment there, and it's about where she's put the camera, you know, which 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 is it's just like oxygen. So, um, like like yeah. I, I can't I can't well it's like it's like crack actually I can't get it yeah. just like stick that good prose in my face <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> because because it makes you think really hard then about and, and in particular in relation to the scene with um Ufra and Druna it's just like well what is it Druna falls in love with th that first mm. moment you know and and it's 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 the 
I don't know. I, I can't exactly remember what I wrote. I know I mentioned going on about the lips a bit, these spectacular lips. Um, but but again, not in a kind of playboy way. You're trying to think of, <laughs> yeah. of yeah. but that's the fear, right? You're writing it. You think if I talk about these kind of the, the, the strange shaped, slightly full lips, you it's you just you you know you're treading on a cliche <laughs> or dreadful a dreadful kind of uh, bit of prose there yeah. but at the same time you think but there's got to be a way to write it and so you, yeah. you you think back to well how were they how were they doing it you know what would they pick on how would, what was the moment and mm. it maybe i think it was something in her demeanor or whatever i think she trails her thumb out or whatever to feel the air and I was just trying to get this sense of there being a charge in the air and she puts her thumb up, which is, has all these fronds on it, which allows it to sort of sense a bit like um, sonar or whatever, what's going on. And and there's this kind of, I'm not looking at you. I don't, I don't, I haven't got, you know, we haven't established the respect, you know, so there's that kind of, um, you know, that instantly draws Druna in, right? She's not yeah. looking, she's not open, she's not friendly, she's she's being very reserved. Druna wants to know more, Druna wants to find more. So, so I was trying to think, well, is, there's that, there's the lips, there's, there's the charge in the air, you know. Yeah. How do I mash all that together, you know? So, <laughs> so uh, readers will judge for themselves, I'm sure, when they come to it. But um, yeah, that it's... Yeah, it's, tr it's tricky. Love, love stuff's tricky. Mm. Yeah. I love that I you, you you sound a, a little bit like you're you know you're still studying kind of the art of writing and oh, reading yeah. and discovering even more, which is um, I think that's, that's a beautiful thing. You know, when you're when you're reading a book, and you find something you think you can use kind of in your own writing as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, it's it's the it's the thing I think um, obsesses me more than anything is the the choice of words. Ian McEwan. I particularly love, uh, you know, okay. Atonement, and I've read a bunch of Ian McEwan's books. The thing with Ian McEwan, uh, as opposed to possibly Hilary Mantle, and certainly as opposed to Sophia Samatar, who's a very kind of lyrical and poetic writer, is Ian McEwan just seems to use really, really ordinary English, but he arranges the sentences and paragraphs, and it, there's nothing flashy, there's no amazing similes or metaphors, nothing kind of straight from a poet's heart, yeah. and and yet it it just does exactly what it has to do with no yeah. fuss. And so, and it's easy to miss, I think, you know, and and, and so I'm, I'm reading it through and I'm, and I'm thinking, Paul, you know, that's, I've really got a sense of that, you know, the argument between those two and the depths of it and whatever. And then I, and then I go back and I read through the actual words again. And I'm thinking, how oh, did, where did that, stuff in my brain come from yeah from these words because these words now i'm looking at them again there's there's not much there <laughs> they're thinking no there's there's an awful lot there he's chosen he's made he's made tremendous yeah. choices efficient choices yeah. where he's used the least words to 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 draw out the maximum emotional depth you know and i yeah. say hillary mantle with that moment with thomas cromwell and his reaction to the 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 angel's wings and stuff is is the perfect case in point you know mm. she, she she the goal was and, and so the way my my pitiful attempt which i uh, you know i i come back to occasionally when i'm trying to, trying to explain this to people is in brother red at the start at the very beginning um there's a character lace um and and they're having a laugh and they in the opening couple of pages there's uh, druna cal and Cal's singing, Cal's got this beautiful singing voice. And so Lace just says, um, you know, if he sings me away to the corn, I'll go down easy. And then she puts her tongue out between the gaps in her front teeth and it makes Cal laugh. Yeah. And and so that was me trying to figure out how do I, in a very, very efficient and quick way, so we can get on with, you know, the kind of the, the book, establish that there's a great friendship about to be destroyed by the opening kind of bandits attacking them and yeah you know, Ufer and cal running off and so again you're thinking trying to think like hillary mantle and all these great authors is where are they putting the camera to yeah to, so that so that one moment or a single exchange can paint all of that so i don't need to write it all out yeah you know, they've been they, you know he looked at um lace you know friends for 15 years on many campaigns blah 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 yeah just, just no and so i thought well if he's singing and then she, you know, her putting her tongue out through the gaps in her front teeth says two things. First of all, she's got bad teeth. <laughs> so uh, second of all, she's she's lewd. <laughs> third, third of all, um, you know, you've got a way to the corn. What's that song? But you you can imagine a way to the corn, you know, take me to the take me to the field, lie me down yeah. and, 
you know, do you know, give it to me. Um, <laughs> and, and so, so away to the corn just hinted that without being yeah. OTT. And then the fact that he bursts out laughing and she's made him stop his singing and caused yeah. a lot of laughter suggests that he obviously took it well and or didn't say, oh, you, you know, you, you, you dirty whoever, or, you know, <laughs> and, and, and all that, you know, he found it really funny it means, oh, they must really get on. So, yeah. so, for, so however successful or, or whatever that attempt was, the, the point of making those choices was to get across as many of those things about their relationship as I could. So I thought, well, yeah, that doing that and that and that shows camaraderie, love, a bit of lewdness, because of course you're all in the fields together, you know, so yeah. you're all gonna have a bit of a bit of banter, you know, amongst the crew, because you've been out, you know, risking your life, you know, so there's always that kind of um uh, we could die tomorrow kind of thing, you know, going yeah, on there, sure. you know. And they but they were feeling comfortable because they were almost home, blah, blah, blah. So so yeah, so so you're trying to do that for the whole book, I suppose, you know, yeah. everything. How do I maximize um you know this this uh, like i think uh, there's a moment i chose where druna and bray meet for the first time at the ferry and uh, how do i i know druna is going to ultimately um take bray and give him his, his his pride and his humanity back um or she'll attempt to any but she she certainly wants to get him on side because she's in a hostile place and i thought well how does she do that and i thought well you could start talking i thought but what if she just slips her arm through his knowing he's going to be incredibly uncomfortable because she's really senior to him and he's he's kind of a you know he's a bit of a joke at the start he's just he's an over, overweight soak he's you know trembling with all the uh, drug abuse and whatever and so he's instantly gonna seize up but she's like come on you know like as in so she's being informal she's yeah. she's she's sort of invading his space but in a way where he's he didn't know what to make of it. She's kind of unsettling him, but at the same time, she's trying to break through. She's just trying yeah. to break open that barrier. You're one of them. You're one of the, the you know, the top notch. You know, I'm just a, a bum. Like, leave me alone. And so, how does she solve that problem? Yeah. As a as a as a person, I'll put my arm through yours and say, come on, let's go and have a drink. And so, it's the putting the arm through to me was that did more work than a bunch of words would. Yeah. Sure. Well, sense, the subtext you know? that goes along with that. Yeah. So that's yeah. That's, that's, that's yeah, what I'm it, trying to do all the time. Yeah, effective prose, isn't it? Sometimes, I mean, I read, I read some William Faulkner recently and, um, and as I lay dying and I wasn't too sure what to think of it. So I was looking through Goodreads through some reviews and I saw someone say, anyone can write anything that's, you know, that only, they, that only the author understands that no one else can kind of relate to or, you know, paint those, those words, uh, paint the picture with those words. But, you know, it it's, a, it's a good author who can use as little as possible um, and have yeah. you know paint that picture beautifully without having to try too hard you know I thought that was it was well put and I that's what I was gonna say I definitely noticed that within the winter road where it felt effective it kind of reminded me of um of Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Ames I'm not sure if you read that but yes I have yeah 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 you, you've got, you've got those, there's mercenary kind of vibes as well you know but yeah. also just the, the use of of the words where you're using as little as possible but it's showing as much as possible as well yeah, uh, yeah I thought definitely. It, you know, it's fantastic it's a testament to you know your skill as an author um which is great cool that's that's lovely to hear but i i <laughs> uh, again you, you 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 never feel like you're I, I come away from you know even the ones i've described i come away from it thinking oh, that could probably be better like you never feel quite satisfied you, you know that you've done better than you could have if you hadn't if you hadn't put any thought or care into it but but nevertheless you yeah it you you then think of hillary mantle and think yeah no i, I got i got way to go i got a way to go yeah yeah I, i'm actually reading wolf at the moment and i read that scene two days ago and i think you just realize at that moment how attached you are actually to the character yeah, yeah. i think it's really interesting that how you're driving these inspirations and bringing it to your own writing and that you really feel it that often you don't realize how attached you are to characters yeah, and it's just moments in those really intimate details that just show that kind of personal nature to narration. And one of the things that um, I'm actually I'm writing the review for Brother Red, and one of the things I mentioned was that kind of intimacy between the reader and the characters. Yeah, that the, the and, and also um, I hopefully the reader again. There's a, there's scenes where I put um, Cal and Druna in a bath together. Um, and some of that int intimacy comes from the research I was doing, and well, actually stuff I come across years and years ago. Um, uh, yeah, oddly enough, when I was working uh, as a as a toilet cleaner in Stoke on Trent, 
So here's a, here's a way yes, through. Yeah. So, so, so uh, on the weekends, so I was working seven days a week, um, cleaning toilets, um, kind of 16 hours a day for about five of those days. And then the other two days were voluntary. And I was just trying to make a load of money so I could go and get a, buy a suit to then go and get an office job because I didn't want to clean toilets. So this was straight <laughs> after my degree, you know, philosophy degree, you know, get you cleaning toilets. <laughs> so so th they had this job on, the, so it was in the Mitchell entire plant in Stoke-on-Trent and they had these ma the massive rolling wheels, the big steel wheels that roll all the, the, the kind of the rubber out and stuff. And uh, they're all, they use oil, um, you know, and tar and God as well. So, so underneath there's all these massive reservoirs that are full of oil and you have to get underneath in order to um, every so often they need uh, rubber that's stuck to these big, huge steel drums, uh, big yeah. steel rolling wheels. Um, you've got to scrape it off. So they get people. Yeah. So you get a, you get an overall and then you've got to go and lie in basically this kind of black oil full of carbon and oil and stuff like that. And then, and, and it's not waterproof overalls. You, you are basically soaked. You are simply oh, covered no. in oil yeah. and just scraping these things off for however many hours it was, you know, so it's brutally hard and horrible work. Yeah. And so when, when we got out into the um, showers afterwards, you know, uh, me and these other guys, we kind of looking at each other, you know, just, just soaked and all. And the, the supervisor said, if it's your first time boys, basically, um, you're going to need to wash each other <laughs> because because you aren't going to get it all off, right? Yeah. And it reminded me of the miners because I think the miners had to do the same thing and, and the intimacy of, again, risking your life down the mines yeah, and stuff, sure. but also all the coal dust and everything. It was, if you like, my own direct experience of, um, of that. And, of course, I'd never had a complete stranger wash my back before and <laughs> yeah. the crack of my butt and, and whatever <laughs> yeah. else. And, and I'd never had to do it to a complete stranger either, you know, that, that I didn't otherwise uh, have a drink with or, or, or romance. So I, but the, it was a very powerful experience. Obviously I've got a very sheltered life, right? You know, but <laughs> but it, it was a really powerful experience because yeah, it was yeah. this inter intimacy with a stranger. And of course that, you know, that really hit home. And so when, so of course you carry that through when, you know, Carl and uh, Druna have been through so much together and, because in my world, you know, women are as effective soldiers as men because it's not about strength; it's about the fight brew, and yeah. which gives you sheer speed. Simply, simply, if you were, if you were, you could be me if I was on a fight brew, and I could destroy almost anyone because I'm simply working at three times, four times the speed. Yeah. And so you get that kind of starship troopers. Um, again, that's, you're thinking a bit of starship troopers as well. Yeah. You know, in the locker rooms, you know, it's unisex locker rooms. Yeah. And I just thought, well, they would be used to washing all the 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 scrubs off because because in in my book for those that haven't read it um they they not only take the fight brews which give them these kind of almost superpowers but they put all these rubs on their skins as well to protect them from poisons because because everyone uses poison um and, and mushroom spores and god knows what else uh, other awful stuff but they have to be washed off otherwise they'll wreck your skin and so that's that whole minor Adrian in Stoke on Trent showers thing, yeah. which is which is them having to scrub each other off. So of course there's there's that intimacy, but that kind of it's it it's not a thing. So them sharing a bath, I wanted to make not a thing, but it's naturally a very intimate thing. Yeah. So it so it cements the the friendship just yeah. in the bath. You let, let me wash you down or whatever, or, or give you the grits or whatever I call them. Um, it, it's it's just that again, it's establishing yeah. intimacy with by by choosing that rather than like you say a bunch of dialogue or a bunch of yeah. um exposition yeah so write what you know yeah <laughs> uh, yeah yeah bring it bring it in yeah it's yeah. amazing yeah you know, all those different things come in and, and make a difference for sure uh, you mentioned the five reasons i actually wanted to ask so there's some for people who haven't read it substances that are conceived to enhance the consumers physically and mentally with speed and strength and it's one of those really distinctive and unique aspects of your stories. Um, I was wondering, what was your inspiration for this? Um, hopefully, an answer that doesn't get you arrested. We don't yeah, need don't yeah. yeah. yourself. Yes. But what yeah. was, what um, I'm, 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 I'm sure. I'm sure you you were there when I did that um, thing in Waterstones with your dad, weren't you? <laughs> I think, yeah. Um, so so yeah, I talked about how friends of mine, but not me, did magic mushrooms. Um, <laughs> years ago you know it was i was i was appalled obviously but um you know they were my friends so i did i forgave them um yeah it's it, very big of you yeah yeah um <laughs> I, I, and so yeah i yeah i took a load of mushrooms when i was younger um basically um and and 
and it's a very powerful experience but yeah. but it was also actually it was a mixture mix of that and also i um used to get uh god bless her my great grandmother great grandfather used to go and visit every saturday and um yeah obviously one of the comics victor for boys is obviously really not appropriate for, you know the world has really moved on thankfully um, <laughs> since then but he would get me he would go down to the chip shop for saturday lunch and he'd go and put some uh, put some a few bets on the horses for him and my nan, and then he'd go in a news agent and get me Victor for Boys in 2000 AD, and so 2000 AD um, blew my mind. You know, Halo Jones and uh, yeah. you know uh, Judge Dredd, obviously, and uh, uh, Rogue Trooper, and um, Slain began. Okay. In, uh, yeah, in in 2000 AD. Um, yeah. I, can't, I can't remember the artist's name, and of course the Slain um, as of the warp spasms. You know, well, I think he did. I can't remember if he drinks a brew or whatever, but he, he spasms and yeah, sure. changes physically, and becomes a giant, you know, with a, a weird, horrific, crazy thing. Um, and so it was kind of a mashup of what if you took something like mushrooms? Yeah, it just changed yeah. you, transformed <laughs> you physically. Yeah. But then I thought, well, but like really hard drugs, you know, uh, mushrooms, uh, heroin, whatever, maybe not so much mushrooms, depends on what you go mad with it. But, but obviously, hard drugs break you down they, they wreck you they, they mess with your head they yeah. break your body down and stuff and I thought that was fascinating that soldiers um in order to function at all are basically choosing to shorten their lives and, and there's, there's great glory there and there's great there's a lot you know there's a lot of cash in it for them I suppose particularly the mercenaries but at the same time you're effectively hastening your own death anyway yeah. or madness or whatever with every fight brew you take you're taking a risk that you you're not you're not going to come back from just from drinking the fight brew, you know, and I make that point in small ways throughout the books, you know, some people just start clawing their eyes out and just fall down dead. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's almost like taking your life into your own hands when you do it, but you've got to do it because you won't be fast or strong enough to to fight otherwise, you know, yeah. you won't be able to resist the the uh, the effects of everyone else's fight brews and, and uh, poisons and stuff. And so I loved that kind of risk reward thing. Yeah. It felt powerful. And, and it felt like that, you know, that felt something instantly with Snakewood, you know, going back years when I was researching Snakewood, I thought telling stories about soldiers and how they make these choices and how it's breaking them led to Gant and Shale being kind of broken up old farts at the start. Then one of them takes a, takes a, a, a blow, an arrow, I think, that um, he, he can't get the poison out quick enough because he's still fighting. He realizes he's, he's now going to die within... Yeah. A month or so or, or weeks even if he gets the best treatment and so it's about it's about that it's about breaking down an age and and and, and being past your best again you know you're thinking a little bit about unforgiven and clint eastwood and yeah, yeah. you know and, and some of that stuff I, I remember jamie my agent said you know um, when he first looked at the book he said well this is potentially very interesting age he said but wouldn't it be better to have a story about soldiers in their prime you know when they're actually going to go and kick ass a couple of old farts feels a little bit like maybe that's the third book <laughs> um but it sounds interesting do you want to meet for a coffee you know so it's like, oh my god you know so so when i then explained how you know maybe it would be less interesting in their prime because they simply kicked everyone's ass in their prime and it's just not that interesting to be as as, as is evident if you read snake would you you realize that these these were truly legendary like, like they'd never lost yeah that yeah. you know people people hired them because because they were never on the losing side and so they yeah. became these legends and super rich and then obviously sure. became grotesquely uh you know wealthy and yeah. and lost their way and, and all that kind of stuff and obviously then that sowed the seeds for the downfall um and so it was it's a lot more interesting with the vulnerability that mm. comes with it with that you know so uh, yeah. yeah so 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 that's where it came from really was um my experiences as a teenager with uh, drugs in 2018 <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say you really feel on oh, the stakes whenever they're going to take the fight rules. I was like, oh, boy. the, the yeah. tension, the stakes are always just so high. Yeah, that you think you're yeah. even if they do come out of this somehow unscathed. Yeah, and, and, uh, yeah, and it manifests as well. You know, like hopefully, quite a few times, I, I try to make clear that they're always looking for a way not to take them. Yeah. So with the day as they call them. So there's there's a kind of a, like um there's one which is basically like a a, a, a like a diet coke <laughs> a diet fight brew, yeah. which is, which is you know kind <laughs> of 10, 10 20 percent of the uh, the efficacy with none of the downside, and and so they they constantly I think Druna um, and uh, Cal at the start, but but also Taylor Amundsen in, at various points in the Winter yeah. Road is is like can we just get away with a day? Because I <laughs> yeah. I just 
don't want to take a fight brew i really don't want to take a yeah, fight yeah. Brew, you know and so that that's that was what i was trying to get across you know it's like if you take a fight brew yeah it's got it's going to kick off and there's going to be yeah. consequences you know for everyone yeah mm. I, I love that you know um, you've got the pros and cons to, to anything that really happens in your world um but not only is that really individual to your world but also i think the structure of kind of what, what you're saying earlier on about writing kind of the, you know the, the letters between several people yeah. Uh, yeah exactly you know um was that kind of that different structure was that difficult to kind of get you published in the first place were there any barriers or that you know did it just go down really well straight away um that that that's a, the letters was was an interesting one the letters was the thing it was the only major disagreement me and jenny had and really? uh you know Je Je obviously jenny being the amazing author she is uh, oh, editor sorry she is um was kind of right in the end but we'll come we'll come to that in a moment so so snakewood's epistolary structure i think was part of its appeal initially sure. I, I i think you know uh, again you're, you're trying to read what you know because because they, they, they were they were pretty cards close to their chest you know like they, we love the book use yeah. a contract you know but you don't get a lot of i loved it because of this this and this and this um, yeah, okay. in, in detail you know, they they love the characters. They love you know. I think it was maybe they felt this is this is quite fresh. You know, like yeah. it feels fresh. It's different. It's it's you know, and an orbit maybe a a big enough that they can they can spread their bets. You know, they've got some hugely popular and, and brilliant authors, and then maybe they thought, well, here's a debut that's just a bit out there. You know, let's give it a go because they can afford to do that. Maybe and and like an indie. Um, having said that, it's not that any indies turn me down at all. Um, Jamie, my agent, said we'll go to Orbit first with this because um, he felt because because it was also the first book I'd ever written. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm truly a novice writer. Um, he felt that the stewardship of you know a world class kind of editorial team, like as in as in you know you've got US editors, UK editors, you've got a big marketing machine. He yeah. said in terms of that support, you you'll have a great support for your first experience. You know? Yeah, so sure. He said if they turn it down, great, we'll we'll go we'll go to Golang and we'll go to um, you know, everywhere else, but he felt that, you know, Orbit, um, you know, being with a big publisher and obviously being with a big publisher, is it, there's a cachet to that, which, yeah. which, which helps people go, Oh, Orbit. Oh, and you, you know, it, it, it yeah. instantly yeah. Pr pricks a few ears. Yeah. You know, it just does, you know, that, yeah. that's just, that's it. Um, and so that, I think that it kind of worked in its favor, um, you know, to some yeah. extent, of course it came out, it was, there was a very marmite reception to it i think you know it, it's it's it was not what many a, a number of readers were expecting and so when you read the good reads and stuff which i did for a while you know oh my god they don't love my book <laughs> um you know there were there were people that really loved it and got it you yeah know, which was which is brilliant and then there were people who were like hold on five or six points of view in the first hundred pages switch back and forth in time good night you know i'm done i, I don't yeah, need this sure. you know and, and so you it's quite experimental and that was that's what it was. That was that was the book, and that was what I needed to do. That was all cool. But so I think it it was okay because that got me the book. That got me a book deal. Yeah, got, yeah. got me published. I, I became a published author. Um, and uh, yeah, and I don't forget. I pinch myself occasionally. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then, and then with the Winter Road, um, you know, I'd I'd had the idea for the story, but in my mind, um, was Ian McEwan's um, on Chessel beach is it on chessel beach i'm not too sure yeah um and it's a book about a couple who were on their um honeymoon okay and there's uh the and ian McEwen does this a lot he he picks a single moment in time and then pivots everyone's lives around that moment and he, sure. he did it he did it with uh i think amsterdam he did it with uh the one with the um the kid with jehovah's witness parents who needed the blood transfusion or whatever or needed the the kidney replacement or whatever it was i can't remember but mm -hmm. but there's this moment where something momentous happens yeah um child in time you know um the, the kid disappears from the supermarket you know and, and stuff and then and then the whole novel plays out and uh, amsterdam uh, atonement uh you know there's there's the one moment in that which all their lives pivot on yeah. um and it happened on in on chessel beach God, I'm trying to think is that the right title and then from that point in the book onwards uh it accelerated through these two characters lives and i was utterly unprepared for that happening 
Yeah. And 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 then a few years later, I watched the beginning of Up. Oh. <laughs> and and I thought, right, you can you can make choices. Yeah. About moments, and take someone on a whole life's journey, in yeah. what four minutes that was I'll that never sequence in, in, so a, in a film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It got a it minute. got you. Yeah. It, kill, it kills you in moments, and you think, yeah, how, really the, you think how, how on earth did they do that? Of course, you, it becomes, you, you look back and you, yeah, you just think, oh, it's just perfect, you know, whether they're watching the clouds or whatever. But but there's the bits about the sacrifices they're making financially, you know, and that they yeah, never yeah. quite get. You know, so, so Pixar, obviously, being masters, um, make those efficient choices to get you yeah. that guy's life in, in a few minutes. And so it was mostly on Chesil Beach, but it was also a bit of up where I, wanted the book's um, conflict to resolve, to be yeah, as uh, yeah. spoilery free as possible. <laughs> and then what happens then? You know, and, and I was convinced that, and, and, and this was, so this then takes us back to the thing uh, where me and Jenny had the, the dispute, because of course the book resolves very nicely, thank you very much, um, in terms of her um, conflict with the bandit lord. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the, for, for me and Jenny, it was like, well, is is that the point of the Winter Road, or is the point of the Winter Road to describe how the post begins? Sure. Because the post yeah. kind of begins there. It, yeah. it could begin at a number of points earlier, but at that point, there's not even a road. Yeah. At that at, at that point, yeah. minor spoiler, but um, <laughs> but 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 then I thought getting to the point where the empire has begun to be established so to sort of explain how from that point in her life, um, you know, when she, I guess I'll spoil as well. From that point in life, at the end of that book, after that conflict is resolved um, to the beginning of the post is actually just a bunch of logistical kind of trade deals and, <laughs> you know, talking to merchants, that is dull. Um, but what <laughs> I had, of course, was, uh, you know, the relationships that were built up in the book, I thought they could be, ex- they, they, they Th- how they talk to each other, writing letters to each other, that itself could tell the story of the origin of the post. Yeah, sure. And at the same time, of course, there was there's something unresolved at the at the finale of the particular events of the book. Excuse me, that that um, I had a chance to explore. Yeah, yeah. How it might resolve, and and then for me thinking oh well how do I put you know like I'm I'm always at my most kind of excited and 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 freaky when there's something I th- don't think I can pull off that's when I'm l- uh, most engaged and and yeah. so I saw I uh, there was this structure of having an epilogue that was basically when I 25 thirty thousand word epilogue <laughs> <laughs> just like oh, I'm, I'm creative <laughs> and bonkers me you know I'll, I'll do yeah. anything you know I'm, <laughs> you, you, had you taken five through at the time <laughs> yeah, no, no, but Jenny was just like, no, yeah. <laughs> no. Um, no I mean. So, so Jenny said, "This is where I think you should end it." And there were no, there were no letters, and and so we had to, we had to talk about it because I, I need these letters. I need these letters. <laughs> this, this is, this is, this and this need to happen for me, you know. And, yeah. For, 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 the, for, for, and also for a, a kind of a, I wanted to get that up thing, that Chesil Beach thing. Yeah. I want, I wanted to see it all play. And there's other characters you meet in the Winter Road. There's a, there's a point with the um, uh, orphans. Yeah. Um, early on, mm-hmm. and you know, and that was one of those bits, a bit like Druna yeah. falling in love, where I, I got to that bit and I thought, oh God, I love these kids. Yeah. These kids are amazing. She's yeah. super cool. She's super cool. He, yeah, he's a bit shy, but he's he's a little brother, <laughs> and she's protected him. And all of a sudden, they they sprung up, and I just thought, the what's going to happen to these kids? Yeah, and I needed to know, and I needed that closure. <laughs> and I thought, and even know actually from a from from a sensible commissioning editor's point of view, um, it it's not that important. It's almost like that you know kill your darlings thing. You know, you yeah. you, you you shouldn't pursue this. So I got twenty eight thousand words down to about fourteen thousand words, um, and and when I look back, it, it was bang on. And in fact, now I read the letters, I'm thinking I could have cut that a bit more. But at yeah. the time, I think I was just so I was so so attached to the whole thing. You know, yeah. that's that's a not that's a novice as as well. Um, but I I Jenny, you know, a tremendous editor said, you know, we've had the conversation. 
I would love you to cut it down as much as you possibly can. But yeah, if you need the letters in, you need the letters in. It's your book, you know, it's yours. You, you've got to do it, you know. And so, you know, obviously I thoroughly admire and respect her for that. And then about six months later, once all the proofs were done and it was all in, um, I think it was the final proofread where the proofs had come back and I had to do a final check. You know, this is your last point. If you if you don't spot something now, it's going in the published copies kind of thing. And I read it through and read it through and read it through. And then I got to the bit Jenny said, this is a great place to end. And I thought, actually, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a lovely place to end it. That really is a lovely place to end it. Yeah. I still think that because of the sake of the three books and the bigger theme of the post, it yeah. needed the letters. Yeah. But it's it was a it was an interesting lesson that, you know, a, a super experienced reader like Jenny just saw something really strong in, as an ending. And I just couldn't see it. Yeah. And yeah. so Je Jenny understood when I had explained, you know, in our back and forth yeah there's a bigger arc here you know brother red and and possibly other stuff going forward i did at the time i and i have got part of a draft of a sequel to snakewood what follows on after the events of snakewood sure. um and and so she got it then she said well, okay i get i get that it's actually as much about the origin of the post as it is about druna's conflict with the bandit lord but nevertheless jenny made uh you know a, a, it was an outstanding decision from that one story's point of view if i hadn't written any other stories the letters actually would have been pointless and, and that would be sure. the place to yeah. end it yeah. i just couldn't see it i just i just not a good enough <laughs> judge of my own work you know which is why having a great editor um is is a, is a priceless thing mm -hmm. because they see things that make your work better than you could possibly see reading it a million sure. times yeah. yeah and when it's so personal to you, you must have a vision that and if you've been thinking about it yeah. for a long time yeah. you're like this is what i've been aiming yeah. for yeah, and, and, and on that front, I mean, you know, and it's advice for anyone that is fortunate enough to to get a a book deal. You know, when you get an editor, they're not going to pull any punches, and and I got used to it over the three books. Yeah, but um, but what I learned pretty quickly, and actually, so, so the first time I I did it was out of was out of like a gritted teeth. I was like. Jenny, you know, Jenny, uh, in this in the margin, blah 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 blah. That needs to go. That's a load of rubbish. Get rid, blah blah. blah you know. And I'm just thinking, what do you? Know? <laughs> you know. And I thought, you know what? You know, I thought, you know what? I'm going to do it your way. I'm going to do it your way. I'm just going to change all that. I'm going to rip all that out, um, and then we'll see just how much worse it is. You know. And, 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 and then you read yeah. it back through. Read it back through. And you think. That's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good and then i'd say about 98 percent of all other edits i had from jenny uh uh will hinton who was my editor then yeah um and i think Jen, jenny summarized uh, my brother red us editor priyanka's notes um which i think she pulled them together to, to to pass them through i you just listen to your editor then because yeah. she proved time and time again if you as a writer just go with it if you if you just push out of that comfort zone cellophane as it were and just do what they ask and then take a step back and then read it back through and yeah. follow it you then see it you yeah. know uh, and and it was it was priceless those books would be nowhere near as good as they are however good they are now they'd be nowhere near as good as they currently are um you know without, without the the editorial support for sure brilliant well obviously you, you mentioned that you're you know um working on another draft of another book so is is that what's coming next then hopefully uh, a sequel to snakewood not currently the sequel to snakewood um it's a book i want to return to it, yeah it might okay. return in another guise but i'm actually going somewhere else so so the okay, the right. next book begins uh, in my hometown of barry um and it's about a uh, a teenage girl who through uh through an unfortunate being in the wrong place at the wrong time gets thrown halfway across the universe um with a, a denim jacket called the engineer <laughs> which is basically a sentient being in the form of a yeah. denim jacket awesome. and and they uh, she has to get you know she wants to get back they, they you have to get back home and it's basically a kind of it's a series it's currently conceived as a series of books mm -hmm. um and it's it's basically the, the arc of her growing up effectively um there's a currently there's a lot of meta strands to it that would exist outside of a published book 
Um, that's something that I haven't had a discussion with anyone about yet. <laughs> Maybe yeah. like Jamie, my agent, and he's just like, okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a website, um, and and, then, yeah. and there's and there's a there's there's a a, a website for for people to post. Uh, what is it? A um, a memorial, a tribute to the main character, because when she goes off halfway across the universe, people think she's died, and so sure. I've, I'm actually, I've I've actually got the web address sorted, and I I kind of want there to be um, a kind of an evolving um, kind of snippets. So I'm I'm interested in there's a story, and then there's lots of the stories intersect with that story yeah, yeah. and lot and, and and this person might be a small person in this story but they got their own story and I, yeah. I but I actually but but also it casts a lens back on the main character but but it wouldn't fit but the things I'm conceiving of don't fit in in the the novel because it would then just make it just bloated and 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 you know not that kind of cool page turning um kind of tight thing that's focused yeah. on the main character so but yeah. I thought but there's no reason why I can't do those separately anyway for yeah. people that you know want the director's cut if you like you know oh, they, yeah. oh, they, yeah. they want the extended edition should i say if you want the extended <laughs> edition they with, with with supporting again a bit of the epistolary approach you know it's it, it's like you can you will have a fairly straightforward and hopefully fantastic story but then there'll be other texts i'm currently thinking you know that that you can go to and go oh that's interesting that's that, yeah. You know, and I've, I've I've got a bit more about the character. So obviously, the book has to stand on its own, absolutely. Yeah. And that for me is the challenge with these other texts: is there are the relationships in them that I'm finding really compelling and interesting, um, that can add value. Mm. But you've got to be careful that you're not relying on them, so that someone feels like they're getting a diet version of the story. Sure. Yeah. You know, as opposed as opposed to a great story that happens to have extras. So that's the the relationship between these meta texts and the main text is is kind of uh kind of where i'm beating my head at, at the moment and uh, but i'm just finishing the plot outline of that i'm way behind in terms of a book a year or whatever but that's yeah. I've, i have had a bunch of time off i'm i'm currently um i needed some time off after the last two books uh yeah. i'd started a new job i've actually got a more responsible position uh, than i've ever had before and that's that's looking after a whole sort of game team oh, um, and we're about to ship um, a lego star wars game on mobile in about three weeks so oh, awesome. it's 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 all a bit full on but the last couple yeah. of years have been hitting the deadlines with orbit and um helping this team make a lego star wars game so so yeah. that's it's 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 all super cool but but yeah. very time consuming so so i i've cool. taken a bit of break after um brother red to just to, to recharge and and to think this through, yeah, um, almost without the pressure of a deadline. You know, sure. it, 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 it's it's a it's a series of books, and God, you know, I've never tackled that before. You know, I'm beginning to see how people who start with trilogies like uh, Anna Stevens, Anna Sismark, and Ed McDonald, and all those. It's like, how do you start with a trilogy? You're all bonkers. <laughs> it's, just, it's just it's just three books. You know, uh, yeah. So so I'm yeah, I'm trying to figure that out at the moment. But it's yeah, it's yeah. a very different thing. Uh, I'm, I'm but, I, I love that. I love that yeah. concept. So we, yeah, we shall see. We, yeah, we, yeah. I, I, I. The the great thing is, and again, talking about the process of characters earlier. Yeah. Um. I love this girl a bit already. Like she's, she, and and she's got a relationship with a friend, which which will persist through the books. Which um, which I'm very very much looking forward to. For me, it'll be the emotional heart of the book, and also yeah. possibly a relationship with the engineer, the denim jacket. She discovers oh. isn't a denim jacket at all, um, even though it likes to be a denim jacket <laughs> um, and, and and hang out and I hang out with her. It can do an all, all kinds of other things. And so there's yeah. almost a bit of a father figure. So <laughs> there's maybe a little bit of a parallel with Doctor Who, where it's actually maybe all about the assistant and Doctor Who's more like the assistant, more like yeah. the, the, the the guide to support, the mentor, if you like, the someone who yeah. challenges this this character um to 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 grow to learn to make difficult moral choices um from being a teenager through you know those those subsequent years that the the book the series of books take you through so from hopefully uh, yeah again, again will it get published will orbit come in and say actually can we have someone else and so uh, okay <laughs> but but right now that's where i'm at you know yeah excellent great well i think that that sounds awesome and like the further you get ahead with it it'd be uh, great to talk about that at some point in the future yeah. um i this is our first You're out of time yeah <laughs> we've been, we been at it ages have we i don't yeah i've seen the eyes looking down thinking oh my god <laughs> no, it's there's just so many other things yeah. i'm gonna ask questions yeah, yeah we'd love to have yeah. the channel again at some point yeah, definitely. Ask yeah. About your video game background as well 
Yeah, cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. If you manage to get the snake wood, yeah, come back then, and um, yeah, we can. You, you probably some of the stuff I've said tonight. You go. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll definitely. We have yeah. so many more questions. Yeah. We can do a proper yeah. spoiler chat with all, all three of them, which would be great. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That, yeah. That. Yeah. Because that frees us. Frees us uh, tremendously. Then doesn't it? Just, yeah. Just, just, just to, yeah. So that's cool. Thank you. First of all, appreciate it. You know, it's been a massive one. Thank you very much for having me on. I've loved gassing. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been it's been super cool. So I appreciate it. Um, and I wish you two particularly all the best because I know you've not long started out with a YouTube channel. I know you're passionate about fantasy and um, yeah. you know, reenactments and, and all that kind of cool stuff. But to see a channel grow um, and it's you know and there's some some great wrecks you know when you read how, how do you read <laughs> that was, it's, it's 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 scary i'm watching your videos i'm thinking <laughs> and this month i'm gonna read <laughs> <laughs> and i'm thinking this month i read 10 pages of this. <laughs> yeah so so uh, yeah a prop props to you because it's it's, it's brilliant you know and, and, and hopefully other authors will say it but but as as a noob uh, and a new authors coming through, you know these opportunities uh, are, are fantastic. And your enthusiasm, uh, you know, with same same with Matter Broken Bindings, you know, who's who's been tremendous with trying to you know giving me um, the tippings and stuff because he wanted to support my yeah. book with, you know, I'll give you things to sign so that I can sell signed copies yeah, and all yeah. that, you know. But but that that takes effort and coordination on his part and all that. And there's a, I've realised coming into being you know a, an author where the people can are available to read that you know there's a there's a whole ecosystem of of you you know passionate people that that you know give us a tremendous amount of support so um you know it's it, uh, i'm i always would want to support you and do this stuff because it's so important for new authors like me mm -hmm. so anything i can do to help you guys um and, and, and everyone else that cares about our books um you know i'm i'm, I'm willing to do so give me a shout whenever yeah, well, all the best with the channel so that's really kind yeah. of you know thank you for writing the awesome books that get us uh, talking and excited yeah. as well yeah. you know, it's, it's so much fun to read especially something so refreshing as well uh in fantasy cool. you know so you know thank you so much thanks again for coming onto the channel Thank you to Broken Binding for collaborating with us. And yeah. we will see everyone in the future. Yeah, cool. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. See you Bye, later. Everyone. Bye.